Welcome back. Now let's take a look at the different type of forms that you can create. Now this is the form that we just made and the type of form that this form is, is an inline form. Now that means that it's just static on your website somewhere, usually in the sidebar and it's there all the time. So that's just your regular sign up form. The other types of forms available are the popover, the light box and the pop-up. Now the popover and the light box, these are pretty much the same thing. The only difference is with the light box, when it comes up on the screen, the page behind it goes dark. Now the pop-up is something that you probably won't use and you shouldn't use because most web browsers automatically block pop-ups. So nobody uses these anymore for building a list. So your choices are inline, we have at the moment, and popover or lightbox. Now you will have seen these forms, but we are going to be looking at exactly what they look like on a website as well a little bit later on. But I'm sure you've been to a website and then after a few seconds, a form pops up they call it pop over, but it just looks like it pops up on the screen. Sometimes the web page behind it goes dark and you can either enter your name and email in exchange for something or you can close it down by clicking the little cross, which is usually at the top. So these types of sign up forms are very commonly used now. And to create one, the process is very similar to what we've just done here when we were creating the inline form. Now, regardless of whether you decide to have a popover or a lightbox form on your website, you still need to have an inline form. So you always need an inline form. You should always have an inline form regardless because a lot of people will close the popover form down. They will click the cross to close it without subscribing but that doesn't mean that they won't fill in the inline form maybe in a few minutes after they've spent some more time on your website or maybe even the next day. So you should always have your inline form regardless. Now to create a new form, so let's say we want to create a popover form, just go up to sign up forms. Now make sure that you are still on the list. So the list that you just created Click on sign up forms and right here is the form that we created in the last lecture. Now there are no stats for this form, doesn't have any displays or submissions because this form has not even been published as yet. But we can now go ahead and create a new sign up form and we're going to go through the same process again. So we're going to choose a template, we're going to customize the template but this time choosing popover and generally with a popover or a lightbox form because either or they are the same thing really generally with this type of form you will want them to be a bit bigger so a bit wider and I usually like to make them at least 500 pixels wide and when you resize like that you can see up here the width is showing now I recommend that you never keep this form here because it really doesn't turn out very well. You should always choose a template or just do what we did the last time to choose a, the basic template and customize it. Now here's another tip I want to give you about the popover form. If your website is light colored, so it has a light background, a white background, which generally most websites do, it's good idea to make your pop-up form a dark color, so give it a dark background so it stands out. You can also give it a nice border as well to make it stand out even more. Alternatively, if you choose the light box option, then your website is going to go dark anyway. So just as we did with the original inline form that we made, you create your form, you click on save your form, and then in the next step, you give your form a name, 
Now the last form I called that blog sidebar because I know that form is going to go into the sidebar of my blog. It's a static form, it's a basic inline form. So I'm going to call this form popover just so that I know what it is and I can distinguish it from the other one. And I've saved the form, I'm going to step three. It's ready to publish, but I'm not publishing it at the moment. We're going to be doing this shortly. Now if we go back to sign up forms on the menu and now we've got two forms for our website and both of these forms relate to this list, the list that we just created. So that means that when we go ahead and we start to add emails to this list, the people who subscribe to either one of these, they're going to get the same set of emails. It's the same set of subscribers, it's the same list, but we can have multiple forms for the same list. Now I'd like to show you some advanced settings for the popover form. Now to edit any form, you simply click on edit on the sign up forms page. And what I'd like to show you here under advanced options, so click this little circle with a cross inside it. And we can now decide when this popover form displays and how often it displays. Now the default option is that it displays immediately. The problem with that is that if you go to a website and before you've even had a chance to look at anything on that website, this popover form comes up and it's right there in your face. That is a little bit annoying and you get less subscribers if you do it that way. The best thing to do is to give it a delay of say 30 seconds. Now you can make this longer if you want and it's something that you can test. So you can test this to see if you make it 20 seconds for a few weeks and see what your conversion rate is then change it to 60 seconds, see if your conversion rate goes up or goes down. So it's something you can test and tweak, but I recommend that you would start with, say, something between 30 and 60 seconds, certainly not less than 30 seconds. So I'm going to make this 45 seconds. Now you can also choose to have it fading in or sliding from the top or the bottom or the left or the right. I tend to leave it just appearing, but you could try one of the other options if you like. Now recurrence, this is quite important. Always display or display once or show every X days. Now if you leave it as always display, it means that every time a particular person, a particular visitor goes to your website, that form is going to display. So even if they go to your website 10 times in one day, they're going to see that form every single time. That's going to be very annoying. So you need to kind of strike a balance. You want them to see the form every so often, but you don't want them to see it every single time they go to your website. So you can choose to display once only. Now once only means that if they see that form once and, and they close it down, they'll never see it again. Now that's probably not enough. You want to get a happy medium. What I tend to do is show it once a day. So if somebody goes to my website at 2 p.m. in the afternoon on Tuesday and they go back at 10 a.m. in the morning on Wednesday, they will not see the form again. So if they go at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday for the first time to my website and they see the popover form, but then they go back to my website at 10 a.m. in the morning the next day, they won't see it. But if they go back at 2 p.m. in the afternoon or after 2 p.m. in the afternoon on the Wednesday, they will see it because they're only going to see it once every 24 hours, not more than that. So I always have my popover forms set like this, displaying to a particular user once a day. You could try once every two days if you like, but I certainly don't recommend that you have it showing every time and I don't recommend you have it showing only once either. You've got to try and strike a balance, you've got to try and get that happy medium. Alright, let's move on to the next lecture.